Welcome to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your angel medium, Julie Jancis, and today we're sharing your angel stories. Why do our angels and loved ones above show us signs? Yes, they want us to know they're okay and at peace, but deeper than that, they want us to connect with them so that they can help us more from the other side. Friends, it all begins with your intuition, vibration, and experiencing oneness. Your intuition is your soul's voice. It's also how your loved ones talk to you from heaven. In this podcast, we teach you how to turn up the volume on your intuition so that you can hear their loving messages more clearly. We also teach you how to raise your vibration and feel your oneness with all that is. Friends, you are here to love, give love, receive love, be love, radiate love. And because your soul is love, all you really ever have to do is just be. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host, Julie Jancis, and today we are here with Taylor, who's going to share her angel stories. Welcome to the show, Taylor. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, I'm going to have you take it away and share your stories. Okay, so my sister has two daughters, and they're actually both born on May 6th, just a year apart. So back in 2008 and 2009. It's 2007, 2008. (laughs) The second sister, she was actually an identical twin. And the identical twin, Lauren, did not develop a heart. So Taryn pumped the blood from the both of them and essentially kept Lauren alive in the womb, kept her growing, all those sorts of things. It came to the point that, like, my sister was going to have to have the surgery down at the University of Iowa And the only way that she could have this surgery was if the girls turned now. And I don't remember if they had to both be like side to side or if they both had to be up and down, but they, they had to turn in order for the surgery to work. The one time they went and checked on Taryn, the twin that did have the heart, she was going into congestive heart failure. And so it was like, we need to do this surgery right now, or we're going to lose Taryn. So it ended up being that at that point, the girls were not turned and the surgery was set for the next day. And these doctors had only performed the surgery one other time. And the one came in from like Massachusetts, I believe. So it was really crazy. So the next day came and the girls had turned so that the surgery was able to be performed. They went in through her belly button, were able to just cauterize really that umbilical cord between the two of them and save Taryn. When Taryn was little, she always told people, um, I carry Lauren on my shoulder or like she would just say where, you know, Lauren's always with me. She's always here with me. I take her everywhere with me. Just like all these crazy things. And I never really thought anything about it. You know, like she would just at the time I was a cheerleading coach and she like had my cheerleaders crying the one day because she just was telling them in detail about how she carries Lauren around with her everywhere has her there to play with her this crazy crazy stuff and I I loved it and I I just asked her actually the other day and I was like do you remember like you used to tell everybody that you had Lauren with you and she's like I did and I was like yeah (laughs) you did I said it was actually like you made people very emotional about it and um, so she doesn't remember it unfortunately but so that's kind of that first one super sweet that and actually I had an angel reading done Lauren came through to me and she told me like, I was never meant to make it. I was just always there. So that Taryn always knew she'd have a best friend and that she, that I'd always be there with her. And I'm like, Ugh. so then it just goes back to like Taryn always telling people that she had her on her shoulder and stuff like that. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> so crazy. And that's my first super sweet. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. You know, the things that we say, as kids and they're so profound but you know that they can't be making it up and I mean some of the reports are of kids saying things so young it's like they're first learning to talk and these are like the first things that are coming out of their mouth yes yep she would have been like two to three years old when she would just tell anybody and everybody that 
I carry Lauren with me. She's always with me. So yeah. I know that some people listening are like, yeah, but we all like mistake ages. <laughs> And maybe it was actually like four or five. And it's like, no, I've seen the proof. Like I have seen like the videos. I have seen people say, you know, this person passed at this time. And this is when this happened. Or here's like the timestamp on this. And this is what their birth date is. And it's like, no, they were two years old when they were playing this. Oh yeah. Like, and I can still, just like, like, I know she was so little cause I can still just hear like that little, you know, like that little transition, like baby to toddler voice, like, you know, that sweet high pitched voice. So I'm like, I know she was little. <laughs> How does she even know to like, you know, people are like, when somebody passed away, Oh, I carry that this person in my heart or, you know, whatever. But I'm like, how at her age did she even know? Like I carry Lauren on my shoulders and it would be like, so she doesn't get lost or so she's always with me or just like all the, you know, things she would have never heard anybody say before. So it's just like amazing. (laughs) Amazing. Amazing. Tell me your next story. So last year I ordered myself a mother's ring off of the internet. And it came to me, no problem with it. About a week later, I got a package from the same company. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, why am I getting another package? And I opened this package up and the packing slip was the exact description of my ring. So I had gotten one that was called like the knot. And then I had gotten like my husband's birth son and then my three boys. And so it was more of like a family ring versus just a mother's ring, but Like the description of this ring, the packing slip said March, August, November, and May, because those would be my husband and my three boys. And I'm like, why, why am I getting this ring again? I already have this ring. And so I opened up the box It it came in and out fell a bracelet. And I'm like, what? The description says it's a ring and I didn't order a bracelet. Like all I have ever ordered is one ring. So I shouldn't even be getting a second ring. And I'm looking at this bracelet and it's got a December birthstone a January birthstone and two May birthstones. And I'm like, this doesn't even match like my family. Like my nieces are born in May. My son's born in May. I have two brothers born in May. So I'm like, but why would I, my sister, I have a sister born in December and I'm like, I don't get it. Why? So I'm like looking at it more and more and more. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. So my sister's birthday is in December. Lauren they found out that she, like when she had gotten too big and we were going to lose Taryn was in June of 2008 or I'm sorry, January of 2008. And then Taryn was born in May, 2008 and Chloe had been born of May, 2007. So the birth stones on this bracelet went December, a January, and then that not, and then the two May birth stones. And I was like, that is literally like my sister and Lauren and my two nieces here on this side. I'm like, so I called my girl, my girls. And I'm like, did you guys order, order your mom a mother's day gift and have it sent to my house? But I was still just like, so baffled because the packing slip says my, my ring. And I'm like, this doesn't even make sense if they did order it. Like, why is this packing slip for the ring that I ordered myself? Like I'm, I did not understand it at all. And they're like, no, what are you talking about? And at this point, I'm like, I'm getting shaky. I'm like, you're kidding me. (laughs) So I called my mom and I was like, mom, this bracelet showed up at my house today. And the packing slip describes my ring to a T. But the bracelet is like, so sis and the girls, like all three girls. I said, I'm not just talking the, I'm not just talking Chloe and Taryn. I'm talking all three girls and sis. And I, my mind is blown. And she's like, I like, I wouldn't have sent it to your house. I would have sent it to my own house. And again, like the packing slip says my bracelet. And like, so I think it was just a way for, for Lauren to communicate because my sister is always kind of worried that like, you know, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. So she's always worried like, well, Taryn, Lauren didn't develop a heart. Did she really make it to the other side? And so I think it was just like a note, a message for my sister that, Hey mom, thinking of you, you know, I'm, I'm here. Happy mother's day kind of stuff. And I just, I could not believe it. I'm like, anybody else would have really, like, I am probably one of them in my family that's more of like the angels. Like, I love angel readings and all that. Like, give me all the signs. So for it to have come to me was like 
made perfect sense on why it would have come to me. And so, yeah, it was just like a Mother's Day gift from heaven and super amazing. Amazing. How did your sister react when you showed her? She was really shocked. Like, I was like, I'm going to bring you everything that came in this package like I had my package from the it was literally just days before so I had my package and the package that it had came in and I was like I'm gonna bring you both of these packages and you're just gonna have to see for yourself <laughs> I love that I love that so does she wear it no because she doesn't want anything to happen to it oh so it just she just has it but that's so yeah. sweet I know it I know oh, I love that. Lauren just saying hey I'm here. I'm good. hundred percent. A hundred percent. I love that. Taylor, thank you so much for sharing your angel stories. You're welcome. Yeah. I've got a few announcements. This month's winner of the drawing is Mackenzie Payne, who gets one free session with me. Email me a screenshot of your five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts, Google Business, or my Facebook page for your chance to win next month. Details are in the show notes. Friends, in the Angel Membership in June 2021, Archangel Raphael and I are teaching you Self Energy Healing 101 and Chakras 101. You'll learn how to give yourself an energy healing session techniques to keep your energy clear, and how you can heal your own energy field. To join this course live or replay at any time, sign up for the Angel Membership Program today. Also, a new class of the Angel Reiki School begins on June 1st. Join this separate program to develop your unique spiritual gifts and become an Angel Reiki Master. I'm still offering private readings. To book one, sign up for our weekly angel email. Once a month, you'll get an email that contains a link to book your session online. One more thing, I am loving spending time with you live and answering your questions over on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Follow me on social and our newly launched YouTube channel for tons of new video content. Thanks for your support and for sharing this podcast with your people. I feel like, do you have questions for me? Oh, Julie, I could have, I could have like a whole day just talking to you because I (laughs) (laughs) just love hearing from the other side, so... (laughs) Normally, like I get information, like as we're going along, they just keep repeating. She's got questions oh for gosh. you. So what is that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I just always like to say, like, you know, we had a grandpa that we were all very close with. He passed away in August of 2017. So like we've heard that we, I've heard from him about being with Lauren. And like the first time I heard from him, I was like, well, I just want to make sure that like you're with Lauren. And the lady said that he like grabbed Lauren and rubbed her on the top of the head. And he's like, oh, you mean this little this little girl right here. (laughs) And so he just like picked on her. So it was like, you know, we just knew it was that they had such a sweet bond. And so I just always like to know, like, how are you guys all doing? (laughs) Ah, 110%. It's interesting because I feel like what Lauren shows me with your energy is that, you know, because you are open to that, you are able to communicate with her in a different way where you talk to her, talk to your grandfather. And it does benefit in our lives where we feel their messages for ourselves more often. They keep saying that you're blocking them though, because something's coming up, like you are trying to make like it might be a subtle change, but there's some change that you want to make with your career. And they're like, they keep talking about this. And it's like, you keep blocking their energy because they're like, it's a hundred percent. She's going to make this shift, but it's like, you don't believe it's true. Oh, please. (laughs) Oh, don't cry. So, um, I actually just got off of this job yesterday. It was like when I went in for the, my interview, I was like, 
I just wanted to cry because it's like, I feel like I need to be here. <laughs> and so like, I got off of that yesterday and it's just like, the, after my job, I was like, please pilot, just make this happen. You know, and Lauren, somebody, whoever, I don't care, just help me make this happen. And so like, I wasn't supposed to hear back from them until like next week because the lady who is like more in charge of like the hiring position is gone in a family emergency, but they called me anyways yesterday, <laughs> like days, like almost a whole week before I was expecting to hear from them. And um, they offered me the job. And so like, yeah, I'm like just waiting for them to be like, Oh yeah. Just kidding. We changed our minds. Like, Maybe you're not as bad as we thought you were (laughs) because like it's working with like kiddos who have troubled past, like whether, you know, like sexually assaulted kiddos, or maybe they've been in trouble before, or maybe they're like mental health kiddos. And as a stay at home mom for 10 years, like I never went to school for any of that, but our middle son has like mental health, ADHD, anxiety, sensory processing, intellectual disorder, disability and stuff like that. And so like, I feel like I, can really benefit these kiddos and just bring a lot to the table for them and I just feel like this is where I belong but I'm just like just waiting for them to be like oh yeah we checked your references and actually we're gonna go with somebody else who is more qualified than you like I'm, I'm just waiting for that ball to drop even though they've offered me the job and like I know <laughs> they've offered me it so so for Pa and Lauren to say that like yep got it <laughs> <laughs> yes, stop blocking yourself because they said this is where you're meant to be. Oh. And you know what? As you were talking, they keep showing me like this future vision of you being in a position to hire within the same place cool. and you giving that opportunity to somebody who you know is perfect for the job, but perhaps doesn't have the qualifications or like the, you know, the school, whatever it might be. Yes. The schooling later on, they said, you'll pay it forward. Awesome. I love that. And they said, this is um, someone's way to pay it forward to you as well. So they said, open up your heart because this is exactly where you're supposed to be 110% because they keep showing me all the souls behind you, like the higher selves of the people here who need your assistance. They need your love. They need your support. They, Lauren comes in and your grandfather just kind of stands a little bit behind her on this. They both come in saying, You're such an empath that you're going to have to find ways to work with the energy of this position because 110% you're supposed to be here, right? It'd be very, very easily easy for you to kind of start taking on these energies. (laughs) Okay. Okay. When I first started doing this work, like energetically pre-coronavirus, people would be over at my house. I'd be working on them on the table. One of my girlfriends, I'll never forget this. She's like, my tooth, I have to get my tooth pulled out and I have to get like a new tooth put in, but they have to put in like a, what do they call it? Like a catheter? Yeah. That a catheter, like that's a pee thing. I think, oh, well, I'm way off. Um, like, like what is like the thing inside the mouth where oh, they like, put like, yeah. what? Like an implant? Yeah. But sometimes when you have to put have a tooth put in, what they do is they leave the opening there. They put a cadaver. That's what it is. It's a dead person's body that they take part of the bone from and they put it in there. And I don't know why I hold held on to like this energy, just like so much and I'm like freaking out. Like if I ever had to do this myself, I freaked out about this energy so much and I held it so tight that all of a sudden the exact same tooth in the exact same position within my mouth started hurting. I went into the dentist and my dentist, and this is why I don't go to my dentist anymore. This particular person, I switched dentists because I go in and I'm like, what is going on? And he's like, I think you're going to have to get your tooth removed. And I'm like, but couldn't a a root canal do it? Like I've never had any major dental work. And he goes, no, I, I think this is something where you're going to have to have like your tooth taken out completely. 
And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> so I'm like, no, I am not accepting this. I'm like, what is happening, Spirit? And Spirit was telling me, I am taking on this energy. But I went in for a second appointment and they said the same thing. So I'm like, Spirit, please, like, I cannot go through this. And they go, stop eating this and drinking this. For whatever reason, for me, clementines make my teeth hurt and also sparkling waters will make my teeth very, very sensitive. So they said, cut out those two things. So I cut out those two things and then the the tooth stopped hurting (laughs) magically. So I go back into these dentists and I'm like, do I have to have this removed? And they were like, no, we don't know what the hell just happened, but (laughs) you're good. (laughs) So, So Lauren flipped this like memory out of my mind and passed it across the table to you because That really taught me I have to be very careful about how empathic I am and absorbing people's energy instead of helping them with their energy within their body and allowing spirit to take that energy and transmute it into love instead of absorbing it into my field. Does that make sense? Too much. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So a lot of times you can work with spirit on that and ask them different questions until you get to the answer that you need. But I want you to hear that if something starts to like come about where you're like, this is too familiar, like this is exactly like work, you're taking it home with you. Okay. So I've had cards, the cards, what am I thinking of? Done. Like the readings. (laughs) Angel cards, tarot cards. Tarot cards. Thank you. Yeah. And the guy was like, you have, you're going to have a little boy come to your life. And I was like, eh, not possible. I had a hysterectomy, but then I had like Reiki session done here just a few weeks back. So we're talking like almost a year's difference. Well, I guess like eight months difference. And during my Reiki session, she was like, you have a little boy coming to you. And I was like, no, I don't. Like I had a hysterectomy and she was like, I just see koala bears and giraffes and like, it's very much a boy. And my sister-in-law is pregnant. And like, my sister keeps saying, okay, pa, okay, Lauren, like somebody give me a sign on what gender I'm supposed to be buying for. And so now every time that I'm on Facebook, I swear I see an ad for koala bears or giraffes. And my sister keeps getting these like, like she watches like those minky blanket sign um, shows and they were doing like baby ones the other day and they had like giraffes or koala bears or something or maybe it was both of them. I don't remember. And I'm like, stop asking them for signs because they're giving them to us. I am pretty sure they're saying, I'm surprised it's another boy. And like my sister-in-law and my brother are like, we're not finding out, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure we already know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we know. <laughs> that. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Love that. Now, is this their first baby? Yeah. Okay. Because there's somebody in the family who really wants the little girl and they said the little girl's going to come through too. So not at the same time, of course, but it's like kind of more like Irish twins where it's kind of like one right after another. Cause your grandfather's over there. And I said, well, what do you talk about as a boy or a girl? Cause he's got a blue blanket and a pink blanket. And he said, they're going to come right after each other. Like one right after another. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and my other little brother just got engaged too, and she just had a miscarriage. And so, and I'm like, okay, so somebody's bringing me a boy <laughs> and I don't know which one, which, which brother is going to get it first, but somebody is bringing me a boy. And I, I just love that. Like they are giving some signs and my sister keeps like, we'll be texting and she'll be like, well, somebody just give me a sign on what we're supposed to be buying. <laughs> I'm like, well, we keep seeing this stuff. So I kind of feel like they're giving them to us, but just go with the general neutral stuff or buy both because we're going to get both. So (laughs) I love that is awesome. Taylor, thank you so much for being on the show today and for sharing your stories. You are a beautiful soul. And I'm just so blessed that I got to spend this time with you. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, you too. Have a good day. You too. Bye. 
beautiful souls. I'm so excited to announce that my book on angels and how they're working miracles in your life will be available on Amazon fall of 2021. If you're listening on or after fall of 2021, check it out. Friends, if you'd like to work with me each week, my angel membership program is perfect for you. You can join at any time and you get access to past courses. In 2021, I'll be teaching you about a new topic each month. We started the year in February with a course on oneness and raising your vibration. March is angel communication, how to hear your angels. April is trusting your intuition. May is knowing your soul's purpose. June is working with Archangel Raphael to learn self-energy healing techniques and chakras 101. July is rewriting the stories you've been holding on to. August is all about rewiring your mind to move past blocks. September is energetically working through ancestral trauma. October is working with your inner child and Archangel Michael. November is a guide to being an empath. Then we're rounding out the year with a course in December that helps you connect with your loved ones on the other side to help you deepen your personal connection with them. And in January 2022, we'll be back with a whole new course on manifestation and co-creation. You get all of this live group access to me, two new pre-recorded Reiki healings, an advance notice to book a session with me when you're an angel member. Sign up for the angel membership anytime. If you're listening in 2022, please know that we're planning to add new content each month. For details and to sign up, view the show notes below. Friends, the only thing that's not included in the Angel Membership right now is the Angel Reiki School, where you learn to develop your unique spiritual gifts. Whereas the Angel Membership is about your awakening journey and your personal spiritual growth, the Angel Reiki School, on the other hand, certifies you as an Angel Reiki Master Teacher and teaches you the art of energy healing and bringing through messages for your clients. Friends, if you're feeling called to the Angel Reiki School, it's because the souls you're here to help on earth, well, they're omnipresent piece of them. You know, they're higher selves on the other side. That's what's behind you, pushing you, fueling you to become who you're meant to be. Because when you do, They know your work will shift the trajectory of their life here. That's what I mean when I say you have big, big purpose in this lifetime. A new class of the Angel Reiki School starts on the first of each month. Speaking of the Angel Reiki School, we're going to need about 800 volunteers this year. We select volunteers from people who've written a five-star positive review and emailed us a copy. That way, we have a way of contacting you for your free volunteer session. Many of you have asked if I'm still booking sessions, and the answer to that is yes. I love, love, love my sessions with you. We have a new system where we send out an email once a month with a link to my calendar for you to book online. It's really easy. All you have to do is sign up to be on my email list on my website, theangelmedium.com. I've been spending a ton of time going live with you on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and I'm having a blast with it. Join me over on social and our newly launched YouTube channel for tons of new content, teaching videos, and actual video footage of these podcast episodes. Friends, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much for being part of this community and listening to this show. I truly feel that this is your show and the angels show, and I just feel so blessed to be a part of it. You're the most supportive community a podcaster could have. I pray for you every day. 
If you have a special prayer request, you can submit it through my website homepage, and I'll be praying for you personally. Now for the oneness meditation, which is the last five minutes of every episode. And as you do this meditation, you'll raise your vibration and the vibration of the planet. Friends, what I want you to do is to just get into a relaxed position. If you are driving, operating machinery, need to concentrate, then this meditation is not for you. But anyone who is able to focus their attention on it, please join me. Friends, I want you to start by taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I want you to imagine that your socks, your shoes are off and that your bare feet are able to connect with the soil of the earth. And down through the bottom, the soles of your feet are these large roots that go down far and wide into the earth. Those roots go down far and wide, anchoring you into the earth as if you were a tree yourself. And up through those roots comes this beautiful, yummy, tingly energy. Begins to tingle at the tip of your toes. I want you to allow this yummy, tingly energy to just dance up over your feet, around your ankles. Feel this yummy, tingly energy as it moves up over your calves, your shins, all the way up to your knees. Feel this energy at your knees and allow it to move up the thighs, the hamstrings all the way up to the sides of the hips. I want you to allow this energy to move from the hips up to the base of your spine, the base of your stomach. And I want you to feel this energy as it climbs up the spine and the stomach all the way up until it reaches your heart. surrounding the outside of your heart, filling the inside of your heart. Notice how your entire body comes into a gentle state of ease. Allow this energy to move up into the shoulders, into the neck. Feel it as it fills your entire head front to back, side to side, top to bottom. And then feel this energy as it moves through the hair follicles on the top of your head so that you feel this yummy tingliness two inches to ten feet or higher above the top of your head. Friends, you might feel like there's a string above your head lifting you up towards the sky. You might feel an airy floatiness. You might feel an expansive spaciousness. What I want you to do from here is imagine that there is this large opening at the crown of your head. It's the size of a cereal bowl, right? And I want you to imagine that it extends upwards towards heaven and that God sends this loving, peace-filled oneness energy. It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's bliss, it's ease, it's grace. And God just sends this energy through the crown of your head. It moves through your head, down through your neck, down through your shoulders, and it starts to pool. This God energy starts to pool around your heart, within your heart. And I just want you to feel that for a moment. And I want 
want you to just tap in and notice. I want you to notice that your heart, your physical heart, is one with your body. And I want you to notice that your heart and your body are one with the air surrounding you. that your heart, your body, the air surrounding you are one with all life here on earth, all plants, all people, all animals, all life on earth. And now notice how your heart, body, air surrounding you, all life here on earth are connected to everything, everywhere. Friends, did you notice how your body got more expansive, your energy got more expansive, and you could feel out into your auric field, you could feel out into the energy of the world, into the energy of everything, everywhere. Friends, that is oneness. And you can carry oneness with you in your every day. I don't want you to stop here. I don't want you to open up your eyes. I want you to continue this meditation and to see that surrounding you are angels. You have guardian angels around you. You have cherub angels holding the space open for you to get into oneness at any time. You have archangels working with you in every area of your life. You have loved ones on the other side. See them. See them in detail, friends, because you seeing them in detail is the exact same thing as you going to them on the other side, knocking on their door, asking them to spend time with you. They love you so incredibly much. They want to spend time with you. They want to develop that relationship with you. When they're there, you're here. I know it's different, but you can still have that beautiful, incredible relationship. All of these beings, your angels, your guides, your loved ones on the other side, they form your spirit team who's always working to guide you, direct you, protect you. Friends, what I want you to do is just take some time with them right here, right now. What they want you to know is that they are working with you all the time. What they want you to know is that they are sending you signs and symbols to show you that they're next to you. Friends, they ask you to see that they are bringing in gift after gift after gift through your heart chakra to bless your life with miracles. Friends, it's your job to remain open, to believe, and to trust that they are working miracles in your life. Friends, I love you. They love you so incredibly much. Stay open and know, believe, trust, have faith, know like you know like you know that they are working with you always. See you here next time. Have a blessed day.